The purpose of this video is to provide a high-level overview of the role of objects. We will not be exploring the solution in depth, but rather provide a conceptual explanation of how objects work together. A configuration in atomic automation is built on objects which are organized in types, with each type fulfilling a specific purpose. For types, we have jobs, file transfers, workflows, and many more. One of the core principles of atomic automation is object-oriented design, which simplifies greatly the repurposing of assets. Object types use short names like job S, job P, JCH, and we strongly recommend organizing your objects in a dedicated folder for each type. Atomic automation uses conventional object management capabilities in the form of functions such as add, open, delete, and execute, which are found in the various toolbars of the solution. In order to make design work in AA uncomplicated but yet functionally capable, we find over 30 different object types. We describe some of the most common ones in a typical configuration. They are the job, which is generally a batch or applicative process designed to execute via an agent for an operating system or application. This is clearly the most common object type and covers an extensive number of functional capabilities like shell, DOS, Perl, and JavaScript jobs, SAP jobs, SQL queries, and web service queries, among many others. The file transfer, which enables the transferring of files across agents without relying on any sort of underlying FTP infrastructure. Files can move seamlessly from one agent to the next without an FTP server, and obviously, like any job, the job F can be automated, monitored, and audited. The workflow, which makes it possible to string many objects together with connectors and execute them in logical sequences. The schedule is the main automation tool. It encapsulates one or more objects and automates their execution in accordance with requirements defined in periods and calendars. The notification is the core object type for service management and AA. It makes it possible to notify AA users and email recipients of certain events like job completion and failures, send requests to take ownership of a failed process, acknowledgments of a failure, and even escalation. The script object stores logic coded in AA's native scripting language. It is a piece of code encapsulated in an object so as to be manageable by any user. Finally, events supervise external events like database updates, file creations, or simply time events to synchronize AA operations. Each time you add a new object or edit an existing one, you see a menu on the left side of the interface. This menu is structured in pages, which vary based on the object type. The following show the pages that you might see in a jobs object. The ubiquitous general page stores the name of the object, the title field allowing you to add a description, which we recommend, the history of the object, the ability to deactivate it, and classification tools called metadata, among other things. The Unix page tells you that this is a Unix job. Here, you'll be able to define where you want to store the jobs reports, either in the AA database or in the agent's file system. In the process page, you can add any sort of code as long as it can be interpreted by the operating system or application, which includes AA's proprietary scripting language. The attributes will vary with the type. In a jobs object, attributes are very important. Here you indicate the agent where the job is to execute as well as the login object, in other words, the system account with the appropriate privileges to execute on the system. You'll find other items like the queue, priority management tools, and the behavior driving deactivation whereby execution instances of the object are no longer visible in A's monitoring interface. Using variables and prompts, you'll be able to associate variables to the object to make it more dynamic and flexible, and create prompts to design custom user interfaces to allow interactivity. Version management contains the successive stored versions of the object as it is updated, and documentation allows users to document the work they've performed on the object. This is what a very simple AA configuration might look like. First, we build our single purpose objects like jobs, file transfers, notifications, and scripts. Then we chain these objects in logical sequences called workflows, so as to make them execute in a specific order. Note that objects added to workflows become tasks with their own set of properties like dependencies and conditions of execution. Objects and workflows can then be added to the schedule, 
which will automate their execution in accordance with certain cycles, defined by periods. Optionally, we find the calendar, which is a powerful execution mask, and allows or denies those executions based on any number of events, like weekends and holidays, can offset the execution, and more. Now that we've explained the broad concepts relating to object design in AA, we do a brief demo on how to create and edit an object and organize it in a folder based on its type. We start in the home dashboard of the interface. For design, we start the process assembly perspective. Before we create an object, say a file transfer, we create a folder for the object type so that we can file all of our file transfers neatly in the same place. When we add an object, we see the complete list of object types that are standard in AA, along with their short names and parentheses. Those types with small arrows on their left have pre-configured templates, which users can manage themselves. These are out of scope. The title field allows us to add a description. We strongly recommend doing this. It makes it much easier to differentiate objects, especially when they are used in certain contexts, like workflows. You are in the object. You notice the pages on the left. For each page, you see the properties on the right. Let's go through some of the pages. In the general page, you'll find the name and title, the Activate checkbox, among other things. For each object type, you find the main object page. Here you're looking at a file transfer object. The core properties of the object, based on what it does, are generally found here. The Process page allows you to enter code, which will be executed during object generation. In the Attributes page, you find additional properties like Queue, Priority Management, and the Deactivation function. Finally, some pages like Version Management and Documentation are quite easy. Version Management needs to be enabled by the administrator and will retain complete versions of the object. In Documentation, you will find the Docu objects, which allow users to add notes to the objects. Other pages like Output and Output Scan, as well as Rollback, are very specific and we will not be looking into them. 